Uh, right, so this question involves quite a lot of writing. Um, it wants me to talk, the main thing is just go for all the points, make sure you cover all the points as you go through. Um, the first one is, it wants me to explain or state whether the following substances conduct electricity when soluble molten and explain your answers in terms of the particles involved. So, let's have a deal. Let's do aluminium. Well, for aluminium, it will conduct um, when it's solid and also, so aluminium conducts as a solid and when molten. Why is that? Well, because you know, aluminium is a giant metallic lattice um, which is made up of positive ions and a sea of delocalized electrons. The delocalized electrons can move both in the solid and in as molten, and so we will conduct electricity. So the key thing is the delocalized electrons, the sea of delocalized electrons can move. What about aluminium fluoride? Oh, oh it's going mad. Okay, aluminium fluoride. What's going to happen with that one there? Well, aluminium fluoride is ionic. We just looked at that. So, will aluminium fluoride, aluminium fluoride will only conduct, conducts only when molten. Why is that? Well, as a solid, the ions are in fixed positions in the giant ionic lattice. They can't move. But when it's molten, the ions can move and therefore can conduct an electric current. And the final one they want me to talk about is boron tribromide. That will not conduct when solid or molten. Why is that? Well, we've just looked at it. Boron tribromide, it's covalent. It doesn't have any ions in it. There are no free electrons, so there are no free charged particles that can move. Um, and therefore, it will not conduct. So don't forget the explanations for each of those. Aluminium conducts giant metallic lattice. See if delocalized electrons can move. Aluminium trifluoride conducts only when molten because the ions can move when molten but not as a solid. Boron tribromide will not conduct when solid or molten because there are no charged particles that can move. Right, okay, so let's move on to question uh, part E. Aluminium has 13 successive ionisation energy. That makes sense because it's got 13 electrons. Uh, write the equation for the third ionisation energy of aluminium. It says if it's the third, remember it means it's forming Al3+, plus, and that's in the gaseous state. So it's going to be Al2+, plus in the gas, becomes Al3+, plus, plus an electron. Okay, it now wants me on the axes below, add crosses to the 13 successive ionisation energy of aluminium. The value for the first ionisation energy completed. So remember, aluminium is going to have the electronic configuration 2, 8, 3. Remember it's in group 3, those are my 13 electrons up there. First one done for me, so the first three are all in the same shell. So it's just a progressive increase, nothing dramatic. Then there's going to be a change, so I've got rid of those. I'm now onto that shell, so there's a jump. The next eight all go up progressively, but no big jump. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So those are those eight there, they're done. And then the final two, I get another big jump, like so, to show that I'm in the inner shell. So those are the ones closest to the nucleus, they are the ones that are hardest to remove. Okay, so time to move on to question three. This is about group seven. Chlorine can be made by that redox reaction as shown. 
Using oxidation numbers show what has been oxidized, what has been reduced. So let's go through all the oxidation numbers here. Manganese, that is going to be plus four. Why? Well, oxygen is, as you know, always minus two. I've got two of them, which adds up to minus four. So manganese is going to be plus four. Hydrogen is going to be plus one. Chlorine, minus one. Manganese here is actually going to be plus two because chloride is minus one. I've got two of them, that adds up to minus two. And water, hydrogen is minus one, oxygen is minus two, and chlorine as the element is zero. So what's been oxidized? Well, it looks to me that Cl has been oxidized because it's gone from minus one to zero. Its oxidation number has gone up. What's been reduced? Well, manganese has been reduced because it's gone from plus four to plus two and therefore its oxidation number has decreased. Complete the electronic configuration below for the manganese atom. If you look it up on your periodic table, uh, you will find that manganese has an atomic number of 25. So I've got to get 25 electrons. So that's my first two, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Then remember the 4s electrons go first. Um, if I add all those up, I've got to 20 electrons. So that means I need to now find another five and they're gonna go in 3d5, like so. Chlorine gas can be, can be added to cold dilute alkaline solution to form bleach. Write an equation for that. This is actually um, on the spec, so you should know this equation. So you've got chlorine plus sodium hydroxide is going to give you um, sodium chlorate plus sodium chloride plus water, like so. And to get that to balance, you need two sodium hydroxides. Okay, so next one. A student with bubbles chlorine gas from aqueous potassium iodide solution. So you're thinking, uh, you'd be thinking about displacement reactions here. What am I going to see? Well, chlorine is more reactive than iodine, therefore it will displace the iodide to become iodine. So it would go brown. Or you could have dark orange, something like that. Write an ionic equation, including state symbols. So I'm starting with chlorine which they've told me is in the gaseous state. I'm adding it to iodide ions, which are aqueous. That's gonna give me iodine, aqueous. That's what's made it gone brown, go brown rather, plus chloride ions, aqueous. To get it to balance, I need two of those and two of those. Okay, so moving on then. Chlorine gas reacts with methane to form dichloromethane. Chlorine is more, react well, more electronegative than carbon and hydrogen which have approximately equal electronegativity values. What is meant by the term electronegativity? So this is your definition. It's the ability of an atom um, in a covalent bond to attract the electron pair towards itself. Draw a 3D diagram of a molecule of uh, CH2, Cl2. So, so you do, whoops, not that. So you've got your two bonds there, then you have your wedge coming out like so, and then you have your dash going back. Doesn't matter which order you put these in, you've got two H's and two CL's like so. Carbon will be dealt to positive and chlorine will be dealt to negative like so. Why is the CH2, CL2 molecule polar? is because the dipoles do not cancel out. So this is well worth remembering. The dipoles do not cancel out. Let's sort the board out. Um, because 
the molecule is not symmetrical. Whenever they talk about that, always talk about the molecule not being symmetrical. Oh, right, so this is a little bit of a tricky one, which I think caught a few people out last year. Bromine's got two isotopes, bromine 79 and 81. Relative atomic mass of bromine is 79.9. What is the percentage of bromine 79 atoms in there? So if you remember your equation, you've got x over 100 times 79 plus... And whatever x is, it's going to be 100 minus x times 81. And that's going to be over 100 as well. Is going to equal 79.9. Your percentage, because you will always times percentage times the um, mass number for both. Whatever I've got there, I've got 100 minus that there so if you work that out you will end up with 0.79x plus 81 minus 0.81x is going to equal 79.9 you do a bit of rearranging on this side you'll get minus 0.02 x is equal to minus 1.1 and then you divide that by that x is going to equal 55 there you go right so quite a lot of information is given to you in question four um which may freak people out initially but it does talk you through it so don't panic um, student given 200 centimetres cube of solution X in which sodium hydroxide and sodium hydrogen carbonate have both been dissolved. Carried out two different titrations using 0.1 mol decimeter cubed sulfuric acid. First titration, both sodium hydroxide and sodium hydrogen carbonate were neutralised. In the second one, only sodium hydroxide was neutralised and the student's results are shown below. Uh, right, the first thing they want me to do is calculate the amount in mole of sodium of sulfuric acid used to neutralize only the sodium hydroxide. So it's going to be this number up here. Um, so let's do that. We know that moles equals concentration, which is going to be 0 0.100 times volume, which is 18 over a thousand. And if you do that, you get 0.0018 moles. Calculate the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide. So we are going to be using this equation there. So I've worked out the moles of sulfuric acid. If you notice, for every one sulfuric acid, I need two moles of sodium hydroxide. So moles of NaOH is going to equal two times 0.0018, which gives me 0.0036 moles. That was in 25 centimetres cubed there. Um, so that amount of moles was in 25 centimetres cubed. So concentration we know is moles divided by volume times by a thousand. And that gives me 0.144 moles per decimeter cubed.